you've been growing plants for more than a few months, you'll have noticed that people online get pretty heated when they're talking about getting rocks in the bottom of a pot. So I've done an experiment to work out whether it has any effect on the amount of water that can travel through the pot and therefore drain. That will test how much water will get through a pot with gravel at the bottom and how much water can get through a pot without gravel. Pour water, the same amount of water, into two pots. One with 400 grams of compost and no gravel. One with 400 grams of compost and at about an inch of gravel at the bottom. I'll then pour 300 millilitres of water in there, into each, see what comes out into the dish and weigh the amount of water that is in the dish at the end. It's not perfect, but it should give you an idea as to whether there's any significant difference in the amount of water that will come through. It doesn't really matter in the sense that if you've got a container at the bottom, you could just get rid of the excess water or not put too much water in to begin with. This is something that gets quite emotionally charged and people get pretty upset either way about it. By the people who advocate for using rocks at the bottom of a pot, they'll suggest that it's somehow better for allowing water to get through the pot. And for the people against it, they either say that it does nothing or it harms it. Or they suggest that it may even make it so that the uh, perch water table is higher up in the pot. So why does it matter? Plants need water through their roots in order to survive. But most plants also need air. And if the soil is completely saturated, then it means that those, there can't be any gas exchange in the root system and so the plant's roots can start to rot and then the plant doesn't have any roots which is a problem no roots bad so it's important to make sure that your pot will drain so that your plant isn't just sat in water or very saturated soil so what's actually going on how much space is available between the particles that are making up the media that you're growing your plants in the porosity of the soil countries that have lots of islands have coastlines that are far longer in comparison to landmass than large countries with what you would think of as a long coastline. When you put water on something, like a rock, you'll see that most of the water flows off, but some of it stays on the rock and the rock is wet. Now if you imagine that on a smaller scale, if you're going to do it on a piece of sand, then the sand has a much larger surface area to volume ratio than the rock. So the rock, compared to its own volume, is not going to be able to hold as much water as if you had that same rock's volume in sand. That would be able to hold way more water. There are two forces at play here. There's capillary action and gravity. When you put water into the top of the pot, gravity will pull it to the bottom of the pot and then when the bottom of the pot is saturated, it will start to go up by capillary action. Kind of like when you put a tissue into water and the water goes up against gravity along the tissue. That's due to the surface tension of the water and the water coating the particles within your potting media. But that does mean that the wettest part of the pot will always be at the bottom. So far, seems fine. So why then would it matter whether you had rocks at the bottom of the pot. So there are two people in this argument. You've got the people who swear that it works and that it helps with drainage in some way. And then you've got the people who are correct. No, <laughs> the people that suggest that it's a waste of time. My criticism of the people that suggest it's a waste of time is that they often become a little bit too heated about it to the extent that it doesn't really matter it's unlikely to cause any adverse effects, but they get annoyed with people's very non-scientific approach to just feeling like they're right. So let's do the experiment. This is embarrassing. 
I thought that only 14 grams of water had come out of the pot that only had the compost in it. But then I realised that I needed to leave it for two more minutes and another 16 grams came out. So you ended up having one that 40 grams of water came out of, which was the one with the gravel, and one that 30 grams came out of, which was the one without gravel. There also seemed to be some truth to the idea in this case that less compost came out of the bottom, as you can see in the bottom of the plate that had no gravel in it. There's a little bit more compost that came out of the bottom of the pot. Not really anything that you would ever need to be concerned about. So it was 31 grams of water came out of the one with no gravel and 40 grams came out of the one with gravel. Realistically, you need to repeat this experiment if you wanted to be sure, and there are other problems with it too. You can point those out if you want to, uh, and maybe we could run the experiment again, although I think the result does show that it doesn't really matter. It's not perfect because it probably washed out some of the silt and that sort of thing, and that would have added up. 269 millilitres that this one held on to. It's a bit surprising, but I think if you were to repeat it, it probably wouldn't be a significant result and I didn't leave it for very long. If you're going to leave this in the realistic scenario of how long you would leave it with your plants in it, then I think it would make no difference at all if you left it for several days before you watered it again. So the idea still kind of stands, which is that if you were to get a sponge, which is like what your compost is, put a sponge into a pot with rocks at the bottom, or a sponge into a pot with no rocks at the bottom, what effect would you expect it to have? So there's lots of things that you're not understanding by doing it this way. What you can say is there's not a significant effect on the amount of water that can get out. And actually it's far more significant to just have a hole at the bottom of the pot to allow excess water to come out of the bottom. So my conclusion would be it doesn't really have very much effect at all. In this very imperfect scenario of the experiment that I set up, that's easy to poke holes in, it still can kind of give you an idea that it doesn't really work. <laughs>